So, hi guys, today we're joined with the head women's coach at Monroe Community College, Coach Galvano. So, you've got a very, you know, good record in at Monroe. You've been there for what I think is like 15 years now. You've had 13 championship seasons. Um, so 15 years, 15 years. 15 years, 13 championship seasons. So, um, can you just go a bit into your background, into, you know, where you started your coaching career, how you've moved up and how you've taken over and created such a strong program um, up in Rochester? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I started uh, kind of like right out of college, you know, played a Division One ball and got right into coaching. Uh, played a little semi-pro afterwards, of course, trying to get back in the game. and uh, But there wasn't as many opportunities as there was when uh, or for the for the players now compared to comparatively when I started playing 20 or when I was playing 25 years ago or so. Um, so I got coaching. I was coaching. I was an assistant coach at a JUCO, local JUCO here in Rochester. And then I was able to start my own program as a first time head coach at 25 years old down in Texas. And within four years, we took them to uh, the national championship game. We lost on PKs. But again, uh, we, you know, we'll get into this a little bit with the type of player we recruited. I recruited to to get to that level and moved to Arizona. I was there for a few years coaching Juco as well as both men's and women's head coach there. Uh, down in Texas, I was just I started a women's program. So it was a women's Juco program. And now I've been here for the past just ended my 15th season here in Monroe uh, program where it's probably the most historic program in the country. We're one of the oldest for sure. It's been around for about a little over 40 years and I'm now the longest tenured coach here. But it, it, the the history here is just amazing with the facilities we have, the championship that the program has won, uh, not only the regional championship, but the national championships We're it, it's been we were, and I think we still are one of the top echelon programs, but I think we at one point we were the most funded and now we're probably one of the least funded programs, but we we still are with the, in the top five, top 10 on a consistent basis every year, making the national tournament. We still compete with, with the best of them. Uh, so that's kind of like where I've been and, and kind of like my background. I grew up in Italy, so my background is very European. I understand that, and and that's why we like re I like recruiting my European players, and we we have players from all over Europe. Okay, yeah. So just talking on that, obviously very successful and at Monroe, um, and that's obviously down to your recruitment, like you said, down in Texas as well when you went to Arizona. So if you're looking at players, especially international players that you maybe can't get to see in person, what are you going to be looking at? Obviously, we've got the highlight reels, you're looking at grades and stuff like that. But you as a coach, what stands out for you? What makes someone a Monroe caliber player? We look at a number of things. So not only the highlight video, I'll, I'll try to get uh, I'll watch a video three to five, maybe six times, but then I'll also ask for game film as well. So if just to get more um, perception on the player themselves, under have seen how their skill are, who they're playing against as well. Like I'll look at the level of their playing, you know, they can look great and be playing against uh, not so great players. So, I want to see the level that they're playing against. So I'll take that in, in a lot of consideration when I'm watching a highlight video, when I'm watching game film, are the players they're playing against, are they fit? Are they not fit? Are they just slow? You know, are they not technically sound? I kind of look in and, and keep that all in perspective when I'm recruiting a player. Also with the internationals, I like doing WhatsApp video calls with them, getting some face-to-face -face time with them, trying to get their personality right there with certain questions I ask I, and see what questions they have. I think that's a lot of times more important is how invested are they in the process? What questions do they have? Are they really studying the school that they're, you know, the studying on Monroe, for instance, are they looking at what we offer? Are they asking specific questions that are particular to our program or their interest? And those are things that I think are really, really important because I think once a student athlete is invested in a, a program, they they will take the time to research me. 
research our soccer program, research the school, research our facilities, research everything about us and have specific questions about it. Um, you know, it's, it's interesting recruiting a lot of times for us becomes, a the first part and the hardest part is getting them on the phone or, or getting, making that first contact after seeing a video that let's say you guys send us or something. Right. Um, but once they actually get to see, and I send them pictures of our facilities, we have, you know, an 80 by 40 indoor facility, which we just upgraded the turf this year, or just now about two weeks ago, we just got new turf in there. We have a brand, a, a, an unbelievable soccer stadium. We have an in-ground hot tub, cold tub, 10 person, four foot in the ground, uh, you know, facility, our athletic training facility is top notch. We mimic a lot of NCAA division one facilities. So we may not be funded to give so many scholarships because we only have, we're limited in that. We have the facilities to mimic more than NCAA division one schools. So you could go, to another junior college and may be able to give you the money, but you won't get the facilities that we have here. And I think that's, you know, one reason we, we also attract some of the top players. Um, you know, when, when recruiting, I'll look at soccer IQ personality. Can I push you? Can you, are you willing to work hard to keep the championship um, attitude? You know, the, the excellence and the character that we're looking for. Can you win with class? Can you lose with class? Can, you know, those are all the things that when I'm meeting with them one-on-one -on -one through this uh, Zoom or WhatsApp uh, or any kind of video, because I like to have the one-on-one. -on -one. I think that's really, really important. You know, that's where I'll get a feel for them. They'll get a feel for me. And I, I always invite on these calls, mom and dad to be on the calls because they're sending their, their daughter to, you know, across the pond, a, a across, you know, 3000 miles away and they need to be comfortable as well to, um, you know, where they're sending them. They need to make sure that they're coming to uh, a good program where they're going to be taken care of good facilities. Uh, of course, you know, you want, want the good soccer. So I think those are the few things that, um, you know, when I recruit, those are things that I'm going to look for and definitely keep talking to players about, you know, I think that that's important. We, and I also talk to coaches, talk to recruiters as well. Um, we try to do as much as uh, homework as I possibly can. And then if I can, most of the years I do try to get out and um, try to watch them in person. I think that that's, that's invaluable right there. Yeah. One of the, one of the big things you mentioned there was looking at a player's personality. Obviously, the highlight reel only shows the good parts. We all know that as players and coaches. You want to see that full game, see the standard that they're playing in as well. But for me, the personality thing is huge. That's something I experienced in my recruitment. You're a winning coach. You know, you've got plenty of championships under your belt. You're always a top 10 team. Players need to come in and be at that winning mentality from day one because they have two weeks of pre-season before season starts and then it's thrown in a deep end, it's sink or swim. So for as well, players watching this need to make sure that, yeah, your, your highlight reel could be great, but, you know, when you're on calls with coaches, like you were saying, make sure you're researching the school. Make sure you know that coach specifically. Don't just have, you know, general questions that you'll be asking to five or six different coaches. Another thing I was going to ask, obviously, as a educo coach, part of your job is moving players on. How, in, how important is it that these players are getting their grades right as well so that they can move on to the next level? Obviously, you're the soccer coach, but you're preparing them for the next two years of their degree as well. So the it's really important. I'm, I'm not just a soccer coach here. I'm also the success coach for student athletes. Okay. So I deal with their academics a whole lot on an individual basis and, and know the transfer rules. But I'll tell you this, uh, my players move on to a lot of the programs of the, of the, you know, you see a lot of college scarves behind me. Those are where my pro my players have gone on to. And with that alone, the first question that these college coaches ask of my players or ask me of my players are, what are their grades like? And then the second question is, what's their major? Because they need to make sure that they have their major at their school. So, yeah. You know, most importantly, I can, I can tell you this, we just helped two men's soccer players just recently that are uh, they were here through COVID. So they had a third year and they had a 3.5 GPA. You know, that alone gave them 
a good $25,000 academic scholarship where that helps out the college coach where they'll be like, I don't have to use money. I don't have to use my athletic money to get you here. I, I don't have to use as much. Let's put it yeah. that way. They don't have to use as much. They still use it. Like the player got a full scholarship, but more than I think 60% of it was academic money. Yeah. So it's really important to get a 3.0. I would even push 3.2 or higher to get scholarships. Now every school offers anywhere from academic money from 2000 to 25,000 in academic money. So better grades you get better academic scholarships, which then hence helps out the college coach where I'm sending my players to, to offer full scholarships because they're like, okay, you have this much in academic money. I can cover the rest in athletic money. You know? So that's, that's super, super important. Yeah, and that's where we are pushing our athletes to be is at least hitting that three point oh mark because it just makes you more attractive for a coach. Like you were saying, the coach doesn't have to go and use as much of his budget now. So right. if he's comparing that with someone that's maybe at a two point eight or two point seven, he's maybe having to give an extra five to ten thousand to that player just to get them in. So your grades could be what separates you. It might not even be a a soccer attribute. It could be the fact that your grades are better. The one thing that I uh, that's also very important. They college coaches and same thing with us. Now they know if they have someone that's with a 3.2 or higher 3.0 or higher, they know they don't have to babysit you academically. You're going to do the job. They know this. So they, that's one less worry that they have to worry about. And that's the, that's really, really important that they know this and they understand this, that if you can come in knowing that you can take care of business academically, now they know they can push you on the soccer field. They can, they don't have to worry about you academically and then you're going to work hard. And that's all the, within the, the player themselves, right? We try to, to instill that in our Juco players be when they transfer. So when they come here, we're like, listen, here's what you need to do. We try to instill it in them. And so when they go, they're not only representing themselves, they're representing my program and, yeah. and, you know, so that's so I take very much a lot of pride where we send our players because I know they're going to do they're going to represent us well, both on the field, on the, in the classroom, you know, off the field. You know, they're not going to be troublemakers. They're going to be good citizens of the community. Yeah, exactly. And I think we've kind of got halfway into the next question just on that conversation there. Um, but, you know, com- comparing, you know, all the different divisions. Why why should players consider top junior college programs? Now, obviously, in every division, there's top programs, there's average programs, there's programs that, you know, for one reason or the other, just aren't great, whether it's funding, location or whatever. But for me, I've spoke to a lot of players. I played at junior college myself and know how important that route can be for a lot of players. So maybe just give you a perspective on for players coming out as a freshman, a 17, 18-year-old from the UK or Europe or wherever it may be, even within America, why going to a good junior college program can help their development? Well, it, it it doesn't hinder, like a lot of people, a lot of student athletes that we speak with or a lot of players that are European, they're like, well, we want to go division one because that's the highest level and we want to go pro and all that. I can tell you this, there's a lot of women's junior college players that are national team playing pro right now like currently this summer i will have uh, a former player of mine that's playing on the switzerland national team so she'll be playing in the world cup i've got a few that are playing for other national teams and are playing pro in europe so coming here i think there's a number of reasons to choose a good junior college one the level of play is not as everyone has this stigma that junior college is a low end it's no good that's not true the the level is very high and it's because we're getting, I think, the internationals and also the local players that are good students, good players that don't really know what they want to do, right? So this is a perfect, if you don't really know what you want to do, this is a perfect where a uh, place to start as a junior college because the same first two years is the same thing. doesn't matter if you go to a four-year school or if you go to a, a junior college. It's the same intro classes. You know, also for them coming over, it's a culture shock, a culture shock. You're coming in. If you're coming from whatever country you're coming to and you come here, if it's the the quantity of food at meals, if it's the just the, how things are going, you can't just go out for a coffee and go walking around it. Certain, you know, uh, it, it, in places it's not like in Europe where you can just be like, ah, let's go get a coffee and, and go go walking around. It's sometimes it's not as simple as that. So that culture shock is is different. So coming over for a year or two and 
really experiencing what this is all about and what the college system is all about is a great way to start. If it's, you know, coming for one year, because there's there's times where we get students for one year, college coach comes in and my job as a junior college coach is not to keep them for two years. Although, yes, do we want to keep our players for two years? Of course we do. But if let's say you are a top D1 coach and you like my best player and you're willing to offer a full scholarship, I did my job. I opened up those extra doors for them to get looked at and in them for them to move on. We, I understand this. I've done this for way too long to know that we're a stepping stone. It's the nature of our beast. It's a great place to really get your feet wet, understand how physical and the style of U.S. soccer or college soccer. I don't say U.S. Soccer, college soccer. Okay. And understanding the culture and what you're coming into, you know, understanding the studies. Because here at ours, in Monroe, we have mandatory study halls. We have weight training. Um, you know, we do, we have GPS monitors as well. So after practices and games, we, we kind of, we can, we post all the stats so everyone can see what they're doing. We can have one on one. We have one on one meetings with them. They, you know, that's exactly how they're going to be treated at most schools, I would like to say. Um, even four-year schools are not as equipped as we are. So I've had pro I've had players that have gone on that are like, coach, it was so much better at Monroe than it was there, but they're getting their school paid for. And that's, what's most important. I'm like, are you, are you enjoying it? And are you getting your school for free? And they're like, yes. And I'm like, okay, that's the ultimate goal. Uh, but opening up so many more options and understanding where, they're going. There, there's so many stories that I hear of um, internationals. I don't want to say just European, just internationals. They'll go to a a, a four year school in the middle of nowhere, thinking because they got a full ride, and they go there, and they're like, "I'm used to being in a big city, and this is not what I want," you know. Um, and it, but you have to understand that coming to a JUCO, you get that experience. You get to go visit places. You get to see really what everything is there to offer. Plus, you get to speak with us as a coaching staff, uh, the connections we have, the other players that are here, it opens up so many more doors. So going junior yeah. college a lot of times is uh, a great way to get your feet wet. You're not stuck. Most importantly, you're not stuck for four years. You can leave after two years. You're Well, you have to leave after two years, right? Yeah. So you get you even after one year, if everything goes planned, you can go to a four year. It's easier to transfer to a go to go to school. Let's say if you go to NAIA or even a, a division two, you have to enter the portal. There's a lot more logistics to transfer where my job is. Yes, let's look at schools right away. Like after yeah. the first semester, the we're I'm already having those one on one meetings with my players being like, OK, let's talk about schools. And they're like, coach, I just got here. I'm like, we need to start that conversation to see where you want to go. Yeah. So, well, yeah, myself and Darren, when we first like saw your facilities, just talking about comparing it to Division One and how well equipped you are, when you sent those pictures over, we couldn't believe it was a junior college. The facilities you guys have, like we were jealous. We were like, we want to go and play at Monroe. We, <laughs> we want to go up there, and we just finished playing. Um, <laughs> but even, even talking on that, how easy it is to transfer from a junior college. Obviously, that's the pathway. But as well for Division One coaches or even just coaches in general at four-year schools, recruiting internationally, they don't always want to take the risk of getting someone on four years of scholarship and giving them a high scholarship for the first two years because there's no guarantee that they're going to come out and perform. Whereas if they see players already performing in America at top programs like yourself, they know, one, it's only a two-year hit if the player doesn't come and perform. Too, they know that the player should be coming to perform because they've already done it for two years at that level. Right, right. No, 100%. I think that that's uh, a, a big factor as well. When we, you know, when we talk to coaches, they are like, well, we know, they know our program. They know we we are always fighting for a national title. So they are like, they know that they can handle the pressure of winning. And, you know, we know this at the four-year level, a lot of their jobs are based on winning championships. So they, yeah. they need to bring in their players that are going to win them championships and and having and understanding the pressure of winning championships. And that's what our program does. You yeah. Know, my girls, you know, uh, are, you know, going forward. We have a lot of internationals this year, more so than I've ever had. But the the drive that they have to 
keep competing and wanting to improve on what what happened this past season is is incredible you know so um four year coaches are thriving on that they want those players I, you know and we find that we try to find the right fit as well yeah you're not just throwing them at any school you know you're you're looking after your players cuz ultimately they're they're yours for the last two years um so talking on about that you know the level that you guys play at last time we spoke your next season schedule was packed with top teams even out with of conference so can you just talk us through you know expectations for next season talk a bit about that schedule that you spoke to me about a few months ago and then just how you sort of get your players in that space to be able to perform that whole whole season round and be there at the end of the season competing for the national championship um well yeah we we're the one thing i'll tell you with us is i'm i'm never afraid to play anybody um yeah. the joke in, in our group text message is messi just signed with inter miami and inter miami is in my playoff bracket now so they're like say i'll play them i'm like of course i will i'll play anybody i don't care who they have on their team because i want to play the best uh and that's how my players feel as well they know that i will put them up against the best no matter what. So the competition, they know they're coming here and they're going to get competition. Now, as you said earlier, you know, at the junior college level, it's the same as at any level. There's, there's the top echelon teams and then there's the bottom at Juco. There is, I think on the women's side, there's the top 25 and then there's everybody else. Um, There's never kind of an in-between level that you're like the top 25 are competitive with one another. Um, But then there's the, really the bottom feeders of of junior college right so with us this year like we have eastern florida which is a final four team on their schedule um then they're coming to us this this fall and we have iowa western which is national champs there we're playing them again and we we beat them last season 5-1 so and i know there he's gunning for me uh, i've talked to adam uh, over there and he's like listen he goes we might have won nationals but you guys beat us 5-1 he goes don't think i ever forgot that i'm like yeah, but I'd rather win nationals. Yeah. <laughs> um, so that you know, so we have two teams that are in the in the final four on their schedule, plus Butler Community College that was in an, in our Nash, it was a in our group at nationals, and we split last year. They beat us in regular season, we beat them in nationals. So that's gonna be a battle as well. We also have our our rival Monroe College out of the Bronx that's on their schedule and they're always top 10 top 15 so it's always you know it's a it's a it's a derby so any derby you know it's always a bloodbath and that's how it always is it's it's a good fought match just a lot of pride within that game so we have about you know four or five matches that are national contenders in um uh, and on our schedule so and and to keep our our team motivated so that that's a key part, right? So we had a lot of freshmen this this past fall, which, you know, we beat Iowa Western, which was national champs five one. We and and they won it, and right. So they're they're like, man, it should have been us. Um, we lost to Salt Lake in nationals one zero on. I would call it a kind of like a blind shot from thirty yards out, caught our keeper. I mean, I wasn't, I couldn't blame my keeper one bit. And we lost 1-0. That was the first 15 minutes of our first national team or national tournament game. So you have a lot of freshmen don't understand the the pressure of the national tournaments for 15 minutes. You got nerves. And then after that, we settled down. We outplayed them. We just couldn't break down their two center backs. They played a hell of a defensive game. Um, and we lost 1-0. So them, that right there, those two games, seeing that, Salt Lake went to the national finals, lost 1-0 to Iowa Western, and we beat Iowa Western. That they're just they're hungry right now. They're like, we want the fall to come in now. We're ready. Yeah. All spring we've had uh, we 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 had friendlies with a lot of Division One schools, and we did fairly well. Uh, we won a couple, lost a couple, but spring season is about that. It's about development. It's about working on things to get ready for the fall when things really matter. So. Uh, you know, to, to, uh, to tell you where we are and, and um, you know, what the expectation is for the, this upcoming fall expectations are high. You know, we have, we have some, a good recruiting class. We filled in some gaps of some sophomores that were leaving. So um, we, uh, you know, the, they, they're expecting, 
they've got fire in their belly. That's why I can really say it. They're ready to go. They they're they've got like still some a sour taste in their mouth from nationals, and I, I think that that's what's going to be the driving force for us. Um, and and we push them, but to keep the high level all year, especially as the I call it a short long season because we play a lot of games in such a short time. It's we get serious, but we also have some fun. Uh, there's got to be some fun training sessions in there, some fun road trips. You know, we're we're flying to Kansas this year to play Iowa Western and Butler. We're going to do, you know, we're going to catch an MLS game while we're out there. We're going to do the touristy things and have some fun with our with our season as well, because I think the experience of being a student athlete at college is and, and seeing these places that you don't normally see is just as important as playing at the college level. Yeah. Yeah, our coach at my school was the same every season. There's a preseason trip you're away for four or five days. So our whole team was international, pretty much. All these boys, we get to go and see different parts of the country. So it's nice to hear that you do stuff like that as well. Um, but obviously, if you had a lot of freshmen last year, the girls have grown up, they've matured a bit, they've learned from last season. So, you know, you, you probably don't want to say it, but your expectations for a programme like you're always going to be pushing for the championship, oh, pushing yeah. for that. Um, so it's good to have that mindset players are coming into that mindset as well I feel like at home you don't really know what to expect until you get out here um, in terms of the standard but what I will say is you're recruiting players that are going and playing for their national teams three or four years later so they have to be they have to be top teams um, sorry they have to be top players to get into those teams so just going on to what you mentioned about your spring just to finish us off I was going to ask you you mentioned playing against some Division One schools, and you you come up against them and you perform reasonably well. What what's the difference when you play against them? Is it the fact that the girls are just a bit older, or is there any sort of real difference? You know, like uh, getting a, a biased uh, opinion, right, for mine. And and I've asked a couple of players that are, a couple of coaches that came to watch us play. For us, I think it's we're playing against, you know third and fourth year players, or for instance, like the one school we played had a fifth year COVID player still playing, had a couple of COVID players. So they're in their fifth year. So yeah. when you're, when you're, you have that much more experience where 90% of my roster, as we said, were first year players. So they're 18, 19, maybe 20 years old. And then their first year in college and they're playing against more mature players was I think the biggest difference as far as, when once we settled down and we were able to play our game because we're a very tactical style soccer, um, st I like to attack. Don't don't let me kid you, but like you know, they settled down and we could play. Um, but I think the maturity level of the players we were playing against is is huge. You know, I think yeah. that is the biggest the the biggest thing that we saw. Um, I mean, we played the. Um, SUNY Geneseo, which is a Division Three NCA school, and they won the SUNY conference, which I would probably say it's one of the toughest physical conferences in the country for Division Three. And we had a, I mean, we beat them, and we, I thought we outplayed them. Uh, and even the coach said, he goes, I've, I haven't seen your team because usually you're strong up the middle. He goes, you were, you were solid all over. Um, so can we compete with the best of them? I think so. You know, even in preseason, we play the likes of NCA Division One schools. And and I, I think that gets us ready to play like the Eastern Florida's, the Iowa Westerns in in our schedule, because yeah. that's the level we need to play at and we need to be consistent at that level. So it's important. As I said, I don't back down from anybody. I, I want to play as long as you're willing to play us. I'll play you. Yeah. The, the reason I wanted to just touch on it was obviously oh, I, I guess it would be that the players were older. And it's just for players that are thinking about coming out is if they go straight to a full year they're competing with older players, three, four years older than them every single day to try and play. Whereas if you're at a junior college, you're all around the same age. So there's chances of you getting to play, get your game time up and develop and stuff like that. You've got more chance of that at the junior college route, then you're more prepared to move on as well afterwards. Agreed. Agreed. Yeah, perfect. So thanks so much for your time, Coach. Um, it's been a great insight to one of the top programmes in the country. Um. You know, hopefully we'll have some players that will meet your standards and we can send out to Monroe sometime. I'm I'm hoping for that. I'm hoping. Yeah, yeah thank you. Uh, no problem. Thank you for having me.